After many months in the water, we wondered what Pino's bottom looked like. And so we sent a pufferfish to report on the situation. It is alive, it said. Yes, it was alive. If you remember, in our last video, the travel lift broke with us on it. But now, a month and a half later, it was fixed, and it was time to give the howl out another shot. We were nervous, but didn't think it would or could break twice. The workers stepped aboard and steered Pino into the lift. Pino took a deep breath, surfaced, and climbed onto land. No drama this time. The yard let us do the work, as it was cheaper that way. We were happy to do it. We liked scraping weird sea things from the bottom. It was almost like our boat was growing skin. We sheared it all off and washed the rest with a pressure washer. Another fun part of the process. We had three days to get everything finished, as staying longer meant it would cost us more. In Japan, being on the heart is really expensive. The marina workers let us borrow some gear. It's easier and faster to do this kind of work when you've got the right tools. We had days of full sun, allowing us to finish the work on time. The next day, Pino splashed back into the water, again, without any drama. With Pino's bottom taken care of, we went back to our regular activities, working on projects and going for bike rides in the mountains. We found a path with many trees, heavy with oranges, many abandoned shacks too, as is common in the area. We encountered no one on these trips, not even during our early morning walks to the south of the peninsula. The only ones awake at this hour were the birds. A big task on our list was to replace the UV cover on our headsail. Removing the old torn cover took a while, but it wasn't as long as trying to sew the new panels on. We started the work by hand with a speedy stitcher, as we had access to nothing else. After three days, our hands hurt, and we had a lot of sewing left to do. We were discouraged. We asked the harbor master if he knew anyone with a sewing machine, and that's how we came to enter the secret cottage up the hill. We'd seen it many times, but didn't know what it was for. The cottage had little in it, except for sail bags and a sewing machine. We finished stitching the cover in one day. Better than hand-stitching panels on for a whole week. Then we had time to take on another big sewing project, our franken sail. Our friends gave us an old torn head sail, and we wanted to try and restitch it together to make another, smaller sail with it. And it worked. We raised our little frankensail, happy we could give it a second life. We also finished the windlass removal project and prepared the deck for the installation of our new and shiny and beefy chain stopper. In the last week of May, we began to watch the weather, looking for a good window to go east. Our plan was to head to Shimoda. By then, the state of emergency was lifted and moving between ports with a boat was possible. The day before we went, our friends Hiro and Kako brought us for one last tour of Mie, the place that had been home to us for the past few months. Yeah. <laughs> then, they took us out to a secret floating yacht club, tucked into one of the many arms of Kokasho Inlet, only accessible by boat. This was a fantastic way to end our stay in Minami Ise. Leaving is never easy, we love this place. We'll miss the mountains, the trees, the birds, and the people. But we've got to keep moving. A new port awaits. Shimoda, here we come. And as always, thank you for keeping us afloat. Literally. <laughs>